insincerity means ineffectiveness. In cultivating all Dharma doors, be it reciting sutras or upholding mantras, one must be sincere, fast, maintain morality, and cleanse the body. Be clear and pure in body and mind. Eradicate all false thinking as you cultivate a Dharma door. That way you will mesh with the Tao like an echo of a sound. If you are not sincere, no matter how efficacious the mantra is, it will not work for you. So we say, when the mind is sincere, the mantra is effective. If you are not sincere, it will not be magical. What is sincerity? It means having no doubt and having true faith in the inconceivable power of the mantra. Faith that its power will never fail. If you can truly be sincere, then your cultivation will succeed. Sometimes people may cultivate for a long time and get no response. Then they may start to think, is the, du is the Buddha Dharma ineffective? What is going on? I am not getting any results. It is not that the mantra is not efficacious. You are not succeeding because you are not sincere. You are, mean, you are merely bumbling your way through it, going through the motions. You have not brought forth true sincerity. So it is important that those who recite the Sharangama mantra be sincere. There are many ghosts, spirits, dragons, and gods of the Eightfold Division in the Sharangama mantra. As soon as you recite a ghost king's name, all his retinue must listen to the teachings. They would not dare disobey the rules. Therefore, monastics recite the Sharangama mantra every day to help free the world from, ultim from untimely disasters and calamities, bringing peace to the world. By holding morning and evening ceremonies, monastics imperceptibly enable all beings to be safe, peaceful, and happy. When we recite the Sharangama mantra, that polluted air in the world is cleansed. Our recitation of the Sharangama mantra eradicates the contagious diseases in the area. If there is a poison in the area, it will be eliminated as soon as the Sharangama mantra is recited. That is how great the benefit is. Therefore, you should not take the Sharangama mantra lightly. It is best to recite the whole mantra. If you cannot, then just reciting a certain part of it is still very powerful. Do not mistake gold for copper. All of you who study Buddhism must memorize and uphold the Sharangama Mantra. Set a goal to recite the Sharangama Mantra for the world. Every line of the Sharangama Mantra contains boundless meanings and functions. People who recite and uphold it should bring forth a vast resolve. You should resolve to recite and uphold it for the sake of the whole world and transfer merit and virtue to all beings. Your enormous resolve will reap enormous reward because you are not selfish in working for yourself. A passage from the essay on the Greek reform and repentance illustrates this point. I now resolve not to seek for myself the rewards of humans and gods, of sound hearers and those enlightened by conditions, up to and including those of the position of bodhisattvas in the provisional vehicle. I only rely on the most supreme vehicle as I bring forth the bodhi resolve. I vow to join all beings as we simultaneously attain anuttara samyak sambodhi, leaving suffering and attaining bliss. We must become proficient in our studies of Buddhism. Avoid learning about Buddhism on the one hand and creating offense, offense karma on the other, mixing good and bad together. If you study the Buddha Dharma, not for the sake of benefit, benefiting beings, but for the sake of benefiting yourself, then you are mixing good with the bad. When you first started studying Buddhism, you might have intended to benefit others. But as time passes, your old habit of selfishness crops up. If you study the Buddha Dharma and gamble at the same time, you are mixing good and bad. If you study the Buddha Dharma and still try to cheat or harm others and benefit yourself, 
you are also mixing good and bad. If you rely on your connections in Buddhist circles to deal in disreputable business, to the point of cheating and stealing, you are getting good and bad karma all jumbled up. You have to stop such activities, otherwise you'll, you will be stuck in that mixture of good and evil karma, and you will never be able to transcend the Triple Realm. Cultivators should avoid, on the one hand, cultivating in the monastery, and on the other, having false thoughts. That kind of behavior is neither completely good nor completely evil. Within the good there is bad, and within the bad there is some good. But in the future, when you undergo retribution, it will be extremely complicated. Take a look at the many monks in Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and the Lamas in Tibet. Why are they subject to abuse by their government? It is because in the past they planted evil causes during their previous periods of cultivation. Perhaps they confiscated people's wealth, or usurped property, or they took people's lives. This is why, in their present lives, they have to undergo like retribution. There is no guarantee of their safety or belongings. Even though they are monastics, they may not escape alive, let alone with their property. Basically, after one enters monastic life, one should not have any property to speak of. The reason that those monks and lamas wander about in a desperate plight is because they planted improper causes in the past. To pay back for what they have done, they are born in war-infested countries and have to undergo tremendous suffering and abuse. I bring their situation up to give us a living example of the workings of the Dharma. We should return the light and look inside. Now, while cultivating, be careful not to make those kinds of mistakes, and in the future you can avoid such disasters. To avoid them, make sure that you are clear about the causes that you are planting. Do not be caught in a flurry of confusion when you face the retributions. It is said, if what is done while planting causes is not true, the results will be twisted too. For residents and visitors of the city of 10,000 Buddhas, be very careful. Be cautious while you cultivate, so as to avoid regrets in the future. Sincerely practice the Sharangama Mantra. Be true and sincere as you cultivate the practice of the Sharangama Dharma. What is sincerity? You must cultivate the Sharangama Mantra to the point that you forget time and space. Is it day or night? You do not know. Have you eaten or not? You are unaware. Have you slept or not? You forget. Everything is gone. One thought is as long as limitless eons. Limitless eons are encompassed in one thought. If you have that kind of energy and spirit to the point of forgetting whether you have eaten or slept because you are focused intently upon cultivation of the Sharangama Mantra, you will certainly realize the Sharangama Samadhi. If you cannot be that way, then you are not genuinely cultivating the Sharangama Dharma Door. Not only should you cultivate the Sharangama Mantra like that, you should cultivate any Dharma Door that way, to the point that while standing, you do not realize that you are standing. While sitting, you do not realize that you are sitting. When thirsty, you do not realize you are thirsty. When hungry, you do not realize you are hungry. And you comment, that sounds like that, sounds like that being totally out of it. You need to be just that stupid. And then, when you can become like an old fool, you have actually become really clever. When you cultivate to the point of stupidity, your ability is seen. If you can become stupid like that, then no matter what Dharma door you cultivate, you will attain samadhi or some level of achievement. It is just because you cannot be stupid that you cannot genuinely and deeply enter the state of samadhi. So you have been cultivating all this time but you do not mesh with your practice. You should cultivate to the point that you do not even know if you are alive or dead. You should reach the point in your practice where you do not even know if you are breathing or not. Some people think that's, some people think such depth of practice is too scary. If you are afraid, then hurry up and turn away. Stop learning. In this world, you never get something for nothing. Nothing is that easy to get. So it is said, if it did not endure bitter cold that chills the bone, the plum blossom would not be so fragrant. We who cultivate the spiritual path should be like that too. 
Outside observers often say that the city of 10,000 Buddhas is a place where practice is difficult, where the practice is bitterly difficult. I absolutely disagree with that kind of rumor. Here at the city of 10,000 Buddhas, we do not engage in bitter cultivation. We practice blissful cultivation. Whoever cultivates, whoever undergoes bitterness, does so because he or she wants to. We are not forced into it. We are more than willing to put down the false in order to get back to the truth. So it is said, if you cannot forsake the false, you cannot achieve the true. If you cannot give up death, you cannot exchange it for birth. Cultivation is not like some worldly methods where you can use some tricks to get what you are after. No, it does not work that way. You cannot do that when you cultivate. You cannot pull any tricks. The only way to achieve success is to honestly and genuinely cultivate. If you have a hair's worth of phoniness, then you will not succeed. So at every turn you have to work hard at being real. Bear what others cannot bear. Yield where others cannot yield. If you can be perpetually vigorous during 24 hours of the day, you will receive some good news. The Buddhas of the Ten Directions will send you a telegram saying, Good indeed, good indeed, you are part of a Buddhism. But this telegram from the Buddhas of the Ten Directions is not like the telegrams people send each other, which are composed of words. This is a message of one mind leaving an imprint on another's mind. When it happens, the light of both reflect each other, and the minds of both tally with each other. At that point, you will uncover great wisdom, obtain great eloquence, and attain great peace. Then the work of the great person is accomplished. You will have done what had to be done.